The year is 2003. I was 13. The Patriot Act was just passed. And you could buy anabolic steroids at your local Walmart. Well, not quite. You see, the Anabolic Steroids Control Act of 1990 placed anabolic steroids into Schedule 3 of the Controlled Substances Act as of February 27, 1991. That means without the proper paperwork, those tasty gains could cost you a felony conviction, a $2,000 fine, and up to two years in prison. Now, sometime in the 1970s, a compound called androstenedione was created by East German researchers in order to increase performance for their athletes. Unlike straight-up anabolic steroids, androstenedione acts as a precursor of testosterone, which means that the body had to convert this supplement into testosterone and other androgens before it was fully effective. Now, much later, in 1996, a U.S. chemist by the name of Patrick Arnold saw the potential in this chemical. Using this as the backbone, Patrick and his company created many new variations of this pro-hormone. Now eventually with refinement, some pro-hormones being created became so powerful that they were even comparable to taking large doses of anabolic steroids. Examples like M1T or Superdrawl were so powerful that some users reported 20 pounds of lean muscle mass in as little as a month. But as always, there is a yin to this yang. You see, just like anabolic steroids, side effects included high blood pressure, decreased sperm count, gynecomastia, etc. But sometimes, with these more powerful pro-hormones, the side effects were amplified. Extreme lethargy, liver toxicity, and an overall feeling of not being so well were just some of the additional reported side effects with these more powerful pro-hormones. The increased side effects were partly thought to be because of their oral consumption and needing to be converted by the liver, but also because they were precursors, it wasn't always guaranteed that they would be converted into the intended hormones. But because these compounds were not yet classified as steroids, supplement companies took advantage. Pro-hormone supplements were being sold at all of your typical supplement outlets. Some were marketed directly as pro-hormones, while others were mixed into proprietary blends. From products specifically marketed to enhance testosterone, to creatine complex, and yes, even protein powders. Can you imagine those surprise gains? Mommy, I want that protein powder for my birthday. Absolutely, Johnny. Johnny puts on 20 pounds of muscle, and he'll only be four foot seven now for the rest of his life. It's like the wild west of the bodybuilding supplement industry. So exciting, potentially dangerous, potentially life altering. But then, primarily because some particular sports athlete were improving too much, much greater than their peers, leaving their competition in the absolute dust. In 2004, Congress passed the Anabolic Steroids Control Act, which made it illegal for supplements to contain pro-hormones. Shortly thereafter, supplement companies had to remove pro-hormones from their products or face legal action. And then, as you can imagine, most of these new products were severely less effective. But like everything else, a death of an era leads to the birth of a new. The rise of compounds like SARMs and peptides, and even new pro-hormones that have their bonds tweaked a little bit here, a little bit there, not yet banned, have been flooding the market. So that is why I always recommend, especially if you're a professional athlete being tested, that you know what you are getting. If you ever see something labeled as a proprietary blend, it is always good practice to make sure the product is at least certified for sport. There have been way too many times athletes have been flagged after a drug test because they took a supplement that had a hidden banned ingredient in it. At the end of the day, it's your choice. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives. But you gotta focus.